All right, folks, let's go ahead and take a look at lighting. So this is kind of where we left it after this last area here. So notice that the original student here put a shadow in. Now, the first thing that I want to address, this is about lighting. You want to make sure that your lighting is good so that it pulls off the illusion of what you're going for. So we're going to do three things here. We're going to fix the shadow location. We're going to make the lighting stand out in this subject, and we're going to show you how to work with this flare. So the way this works is we're going to hit three things so that this looks unified. Now, the student originally took the shadow and put it down in front of the girl. Now, if I take a look at this to kind of go through, they Gaussian blurred it, they made it darker, and they added levels. So technically, not that bad. But let's take a look at where it is. If you were to pull the shadow up, notice if the light is here, the shadow would not be coming from in front of the girl, right? So one of the tools that I like to use here on the iPad is I like to do art pose. Now, this isn't an advertisement for art pose. There are a lot of good online tools that you can use to figure out where shadows are coming from. But I want to pop over to the iPad and I want to show you how you might figure this out. Notice where the light source is coming from. And so when I go to the iPad, we're going to replicate that light source. Let's go ahead and jump on over to the iPad. All right, gang, this is a program called Art Pose. And again, I don't endorse it. I just use it. And the nice thing I like about this is that if you're wondering where the light would hit in a certain scene, you can come over and adjust your perspective view. You can come over and hit your light. And now you can adjust the light in a variety of situations. So you see how the light is now coming from the left-hand side, similar to where our image was? And the nice thing also is, if we wanted to look at how this light would affect the figure, we can go ahead and using art pose here, we can model the figure to an area where it's relatively close to what we're going to experience here. Let's go ahead and move that back. There we go. So you see where the shadow's striking the figure here. Let's go ahead and move over to the light. So the good news is, where should that shadow be? Now, as I move the light back and forth, closer and further, we're going to want to put the light pretty much coming out this right-hand side, okay? So just a different way that you could use some tools to kind of help out. All right, let's go ahead and pop back over to Affinity Photo. All right, so knowing what we now know about the iPad, let's go ahead and move her over here. Let's go ahead and put her behind this girl here. And now we want to do a perspective warp. So I'm coming over to this perspective tool and I'm just going to put her right about here, right? Wherever you want to be. And then you want to taper her into those feet, right? So I think that I'm pretty good there. Let's go ahead and apply. All right, that looks pretty darn good. Now, if it looks a little bit heavy, you can always either change the blend mode or you can drop this down. I think for my money, I'm gonna add the Gaussian blur. I'm gonna crank this up and I'm gonna go to about 300 pixels in terms of a blur. All right, perfect. And then let's crank that up just a little bit here. All right, so that's a nice easy way to fix the shadow. Now we're kind of going in the right direction. Now around her feet, I wanna come over here. I'm gonna grab an ellipse. I'm going to go ahead and put this ellipse over here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag it down below the girl, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur layer, just like this. I'm going to crank it up until that kind of disappears. And I'm going to attach it to the ellipse. Now, why is that ellipse still hanging out? It's got a stroke. Let's kill the stroke. No stroke. Now, let's see what we got here. We need to add more Gaussian Blur. So come over to the ellipse, Gaussian Blur, crank that bad boy up until it's not a thing anymore. And then if you're having problems, you can go ahead and adjust the intensity of it or you could even change the blend mode of it, okay? The goal is here to initiate the shadow here and then move it here. And because it's an ellipse, we can constantly be moving it until we feel that we've got it quasi right. Now it's a little bit, let's go ahead and crank up the Gaussian Blur a little bit more still. 
Let's go to 200. All right. Ooh. All right. That looks pretty good. All right. I'm going to crank that up a little bit. All right. So we got the shadow thing figured out. Now let's make her a little bit lighter because this light would be reflecting down onto her face. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over and we're going to go to the girl and then we're going to replicate this in the bear. We're going to add in a curves adjustment. So I'm going to come over to the curves. I'm going to come down to the curves and I'm going to crank this up to an extreme level just like that. Okay. It's pretty extreme, right? Now watch this. I come over to my flood fill. I grab the black and when I'm on the curves layer, I mask it. Okay. Let's move the curves layer inside the girl. Okay. So now we got the curves layer and now I'm going to come over with my brush. I'm going to crank my flow up to a hundred and I'm going to bring my white out. Now you see what this is doing as I hover over this now is going to allow me in the areas that I think should be white to go ahead and increase that area. So it's bringing that lightness out. And because it's a curves layer, I can always adjust it anytime I want to kind of make it match. So we're going to do the same thing for the bear here. We're going to come over to curves. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a curves layer. We're going to crank it up to an insane level, just like that. I'm going to drag it inside the bear. And now I'm going to mask it. Come over with the paint bucket, grab the black, mask it in. Now it's concealed. Now we come over with the brush and I come over with my white and I'm able to grab the side of my bear. So now if this is coming to the side, the bear is lit with a rim light. She's got half of her face in light, which is going to really go well for the, uh, the feedback. So now she's got this part of her face in light there. And now what we're going to do one last thing, we're going to show you how to work with this flare. We're going to come down here. We're going to duplicate the flare layer. We're going to call this flare back. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur Live filter layer, blur Gaussian blur. And we're going to crank that up a little and I want to attach it to the flare. Okay, so what's this doing here? Now you see how it's subtly moving? Why isn't that looking really good? Watch this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move the flare. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to bring this in. And now here, the reason I hold control is we have the same midpoint. I'm going to bring it in to right about here. All right, so now we made the flare a little bit larger. And if you wanted to, watch this now. If we group these together to create a flare group, now we can mask it. And so let's say it's around the face. It's a little bit bright, let's say. We're going to go ahead and we're going to actually, let's do this. Let's do it this way. I'm going to bring these up. I don't like what the group did to it. Okay, we're going to delete the group and I'm just going to go to the flare back and I'm going to rasterize and now I'm going to mask out the flare back. I don't know why the group decided it wanted to do that, but it did. I'm going to use a radial mask and I come down here and if I feel that it's a little bit overpowering, I can always come in, blacken that a little bit. Bring it to the dark. And now I can adjust the amount of flare. Never be afraid to make your flares a little bit larger than they need to be. And never be afraid to create a second or even a third layer. Watch this. Duplicate. If I really wanted to, I could take this flare layer and I could bring it. Oops. Let's control Z. Hold control. And you can bring it up all you want. And then what you can do is you can drop in and reduce it down. Totally up to you about what you want to do with flares, but stacking the flares. And then the last thing would be changing the blend mode, right? Change them over to screen. Let's say 
right here. Change that over to screen. All right, that's actually a really good flare. So in this lesson, you learn how to skew your shadow, you learn how to work with flares, and you learned how to set her up so that we get some reflected light on the side of the face. All right, let's go ahead and get into the next one.